So this is example 13.9 out of the book. And I'll read it to you first, and then we'll, I'll show you the table. It says, in a study of heart disease among male federal employees, researchers classified 356 volunteer subjects according to their socioeconomic status and their smoking habits. They were categorized in one of three categories for SES, high, middle, and low. And they were categorized about their smoking habits. If they were current smokers, former smokers, or never smoked. And when they put the 356 people in the table, here are the numbers that they obtained. This is a slightly different kind of test than we've done before. Um, not just because the table's bigger, but because the idea of what we're trying to do with the table is a little bit different. If you've got a table that you've got to do on a test or a quiz or a homework problem or whatever, it's a good idea to look at these totals and make sure that the totals for the rows and the totals for the column equal one another, because if they don't, obviously you've made a mistake. This table right here is a three by three table, right? So we'll get to it in a minute again, but what are the degrees of freedom for this problem? Four. Row minus one times column minus one, so it's three minus one times three minus one, two times two, so there's four degrees of freedom. The question that we want to ask here is whether or not socioeconomic status and smoking status have any relationship with each other. The HO is there is no association between SES and smoking habits. And your HA is there is an association between SES and smoking habits. And of course, if we decide that we're going to reject HO in favor of HA, if we get to the end of the problem, have a small p-value, want to reject HO in favor of HA, decide there is an association, at that point we'll go back and figure out where the connection falls, which groups had a higher incidence of smoking, or, or which smokers had a different SES. Okay, so this table that we've got right here is the observed values, right? If I just take that table, shrink it down a little bit, obviously there it is. These numbers are the observed values. And again, it's a three by three matrix. I don't worry about the totals. It's a three by three matrix. We'll get to, to it in a second where we work it all out in the calculator. But now I just want to examine the first cell and show you the mathematics for it. The mathematics would be the same no matter what cell it is. So to find the expected value for the first cell, I take the row total times the column total over the table total. So it's 116 times 211 over 356. So even though the totals aren't part of the so-called 3x3 three three matrix, it's still helpful to have the totals on there for doing these calculations. And that works out to be 68.75. So if, in fact, the null hypothesis was true, if there's no association between smoking status and socioeconomic status, then I would have expected to see 68.75 in the first cell. What I actually saw was 51. So now I want to measure how wrong I was, or how much different than expected I was. We'll sum that up for all the table, and if that's way different, then we decide HO must not be true. In reality, I wouldn't actually expect 68.75 and 51 to be identical. I just want to know how close they are. How far off is it? And if it's way off, then I don't think HO is true. Okay, so I would continue this process I've done in blue for each of the nine cells. 
Now, we're not going to actually go through it because the calculator will do it for us, but I am going to expect you to be able to show me for one cell or two cells what's going on so that I know you understand that process. The next thing you would do after you've done all nine cells is measure how wrong 68.75 was from the 51. And we're going to use the same old formula. It's the sum of observed minus expected squared over expected. And you have to do the observed minus expected squared over the expected nine times, add up those nine, and that's your chi-squared test statistic. And you've got to do it nine times because it's a three by three cell, or three by three matrix. So in other words, for the first cell, I'm just going to do observed minus expected squared over expected, which is 51 minus 68.75 squared over 68.75. So if you grab your calculator, I would say you should try it for yourself right now and not just trust me. I get 4.583. Now that's just the chi-squared test component for the very first cell. You've got to do the next eight cells and add all of those up to get the chi-squared test statistic. This might be a little different because uh, I didn't use all the digits on here, but you get the, the main idea. Now I want to show you how to do it in your calculator so we can get all this stuff. So grab your calculator and go to matrix A, and we want to edit that dude. into a 3 by 3 matrix and then enter all the numbers from the table so I've entered the, the 3 by 3 matrix from the observed values into the matrix and it's it's worth 20 seconds of your time to make sure that you've entered those numbers correctly when you're taking a test or a quiz because obviously if you miss enter one of them you're gonna miss the problem and I and the AP people would expect that when there's a small number of numbers like in this case there's only nine numbers that you're gonna double check it to get them right if we give you 50 numbers you know maybe maybe it's acceptable if, if you accidentally mistyped one because the, the class is not a calculator data entry class but You've got to be careful when you do what you're doing. All right, now I'm going to go to stat test, and I'll go to chi-squared test. My observed values I just put into matrix A. The expected values will be stored by the calculator in matrix B. And I'll hit calculate. This is my chi-squared test statistic. Four degrees of freedom, like we said previously. And my p-value is tiny. Be careful that you see it's times 10 to the negative fourth. Don't write 9.8. So my chi-squared test statistic is 18.5. The p-value is this. The degrees of freedom are that. So in this case, because my p-value is so small, I'm going to reject HO in favor of HA. I reject the idea that there's no association between smoking status and socioeconomic status and decide, in fact, that there is a relationship between them. We'll go back and talk about the follow-up analysis in just a second. So far, so good? We, we will go back and talk about the question was, should we mention the square that mattered the most? We should and we will. The limitation on your calculator is it doesn't give you the, the matrix for how much each square measured up. So I will probably give you computer output to have you do that. But yes, you should do that. Because, of course, the question is, if I say there's a relationship between smoking and SES, you want to know if rich people smoke more or less, right? So that's a logical question that this should tell us. The calculator, unfortunately, doesn't show us all that. 
if you had a TI-84 and did the chi-squared goodness of fit test, it gave you the contributing values. For some reason, they haven't programmed this one to do it. So the next thing I want to do before I talk about that follow-up analysis is I want to go back and talk about the conditions necessary for the test. What's the first thing? I always need an SRS. So I hope that these 356 people are an SRS of males from this company or this group, whatever it was that we were looking at, federal employees. I hope that these are 300. They were volunteers, but I hope that these 356 sort of represent the whole group of male federal employees. What's the next one? No expected values can be zero. And the third one? No more than 20% of the expected values can be less than five. So I got to see what the expected values are. That's fine because the calculator stored them for me. So I'm going to go back to matrix and I'm going to look at matrix two. So I just went to, to B or number two, hit enter, and it's going to show me the expected matrix. So I just need to take a cursory examination of this. I see that the smallest expected value is 14.46. Clearly none of them are zero and none of them in this case are less than five. So to demonstrate to me or to the grader that you've looked at this, what I would want you to say is none of the expected values are zero and none of them are less than five. In fact, the smallest one is 14.46. Now I know that not only did you know what the conditions were, but you actually checked to see that they were met. And because of the mechanics of how the calculator does it, I think it's fair for you to do this a little bit later in the problem just because you're going to have to calculate the expecteds anyway in order to work the silly thing. What would you do if one of the expected or two or three or four of the cells were less than five? Take a larger sample. If you took a larger sample, then that would help beef some of these up a little bit. So now I've gone through and written down the chi-squared components for each of the nine cells. If we add all those things up, we get the chi-squared test statistic of 18.5. The degrees of freedom were four and you could either use your calculator or you could use your, your blue chart or you could use the textbook or you could use chi-squared CDF to get the p-value but either way we've said that the p-value was uh, pretty small meaning we have strong evidence to reject HO in favor of HA. I think there is a relationship between smoking and SES and now I go back and look at this graph right here. And I would say in this case, both of these numbers should be addressed. Obviously, 5.3 is bigger than 4.6, but they're both pretty big, especially when I compare it to the rest of the numbers. So I would say those two, those two cells had the most. Both of those are about current smokers. And if I look back at my expected values, in the first cell, the top left cell, I expected 68.75. And then in the top right cell, I expected 30.3. If I look at my givens, or my observed, I observed 51 in this cell. This is observed. And I observed 43 in this cell. So in the first cell, I expected more than I observed. In other words, fewer high SES people were current smokers than I thought I'd see. And in the other one, more low SES people were smokers than I thought I'd see, if there's no relationship. So if there was no relationship, then it should have been what I had in blue, but I actually got what I had down here, and the lower SESs uh, smoked more than I thought they would, and the higher SESs are, smoked less than I thought they would. That's your follow-up analysis.